So today uh, we are going to start speaking and seeing how to uh, integrate in a web application, a generic web application, uh, some voice capability. Uh, for around the first hour, in the last 20-30 uh, minutes, there are some people that um, have some question about uh, the feedback about milestone number two, so we can cover that in that 20-30 uh, minutes, both in general, because there are some things that uh, apply to most of the group, so they could be uh, presented together and some other things that are obviously specific per group mm. uh, but back again on voice user interface on the web so as we partially know for creating a voice user interface we have three typically we have three main steps that is speech recognition so voice to text speech to text in which we transform the speech from a human being into a textual sentence textual component for a computer optionally there could be some text manipulation a different degree it depends from the specific application in our case since as a reminder we are interested in creative in creating interactive prototypes and not let's say final software final tools we can you can probably leverage different level of for this text manipulation from a simple if this word is present in the text that is recognized to something much more complex that needs le natural language processing to understand the full sentence to bring together multiple sentences to provide a proper response and we will try to see both options and finally we will have speech synthesis so again from the recognized text eventually optionally manipulated in some way we get uh, an answer we get a response and then we, we can speech that we can have the computer speech that uh, that text that answer mm -hmm. so we can ask for instance to a computer what's the weather today and then according to some sort of text manipulation or other uh, intelligence of the system it may always reply it will it will rain no matter if it's also if it's not uh, or we can try to understand that is a today in the sentence that maybe there is a city or that maybe we need to know in which city or in which day we are going to ask the weather for and then that response could also be uh, uh, made as a voice in output not only as a text hmm? like it's raining or it will rain hmm? so these two steps we are going to see them starting from today and we are going to start from a very very simple application to reach basically all of this with a natural language processing part in it or that uses uh, a natural language processing component so uh, we are going to start from a simple application I already share with you on Slack the link of this simple basic application for which we start and we are going to use uh, HTML5, JavaScript and PHP and we, we obviously have also some CSS inside this application but we don't obviously focus on that because it's not really uh, is there to, to give a style to the web application but it's not the point here mm -hmm. so again as a reminder when we are going to all of these we are again interested in creating an interactive prototype quite advanced but yet a prototype mm -hmm. at the end so we don't want to, to realize the best possible uh, product in the world we're interested in, in bringing home a interactive prototype good enough hmm, for our goal so the web application that i started to realize that is composite based on html css 
and a little bit of JavaScript and PHP is a that is this address that you already have both on the website and on Slack and it will be a weather web application so just to have something that is different from all your project so the idea is to have something to chat with a computer system and asking uh, in addition to hi hello and these greetings also an application to ask about the weather so just ask about the weather what's the weather today and receive a response of some kind from the stupid one to the most to the smartest one about the weather to the most appropriate and then have this response also in voice so the, the process interaction we can imagine is uh, to say or to write we will also start by writing uh, hi and the response will be greetings and what's the weather today in Turin and the response will be it will be mm, sunny it was sunny today or mostly and we can ask again uh, what's the weather in Rome tomorrow and we can proceed with this uh, chatting back and forth mm -hmm. so uh, let's have a look at this uh, application uh, I'm going to use this is not mandatory for you you can use whatever tool you prefer but I'm going to use uh, well first of all MAMP that is uh, let's say a, a parent a, a cousin of XAMPP mm, that is Mac only but basically it gives you uh, a database um, a PHP uh, Apache server and PHP mm, so if you are going to use XAMPP or something like that is totally the same thing so this is just started a uh, HTTP server and we have uh, PHP and I'm going to use right now PHP storm uh, as an IDE uh, PHP storm is in the family of JetBrains so you maybe uh, you know Android Studio that is made by the same uh, company uh, PyCharm for Python or IntelliJ for Java is the same platform for different programming language uh, it's free for students if you uh, register on the JetBrain uh, website to access every ID of the JetBrains and uh, the full professional version and I'm going to use this because uh, there is we're going to use tomorrow probably a composer that is a, a package manager for PHP and in since we don't want to really go in, in depth in how to use Composer here it's, it's embedded all the management of this Composer so it's quite easier to just click and say install there is graphical user interface to setting up packets and so on uh, packages and so on so uh, nothing to install except the ID so it, it, it manages everything so just for, for this, because I'm lazy, I don't want to install a lot of things that I will probably never reuse in my life. Um, so this is, is an IDE, it's the same. We are going to use Composer tomorrow for the natural language pro for the advanced na natural language processing part. But today is just uh, PHP and uh, JavaScript, uh, mostly JavaScript. So the, the, the application that you that you have, sorry if it's not really visible here it's composed by I can take this on GitHub is public yeah is composed of basically a static folder that contains a JavaScript file and a CSS file uh, in index.html and a process.php so in this application we don't have the PHP server that is serving and producing the HTML pages I have a front-end application that needs a server but in, in this moment, it can also be executed by double clicking on index.html for what it's doing without any server. And at a certain point, it performs an AJAX request to that process.php file. 
So in that way, we have a front-end application that is separate from the back-end. And they happen to run on the same server, the Apache server, but they can also run it on different server. So this is also, uh, this is also done for, for purpose because you can replace process.php with whatever you want in whatever other languages and still have index HTML and the JavaScript file working. The important thing is that, that process.php or process.py or process.javascript, if it's not JS, is able to answer to an Ajax request. And that is the important thing. So how, it, how is done this application? A very quick, yeah, not here. A very quick overview of this. So let's start from the, the index HTML. Nothing really special here. We have just uh, an HTML5 um, document uh, that set up English as a language, some meta uh, attributes, um, a title that is weather agent, a link to the style sheet that is in the, the, static, star, in the static folder, and a body with uh, a couple of div. So a root container, another container that contains a chat that you may imagine, uh, a, a list that as a, as a class chat that you may imagine what is about, and then an input area here in which you can write some text to, to process, and a button that has, has a microphone, microphone to start not right now, but to start in, let's say, 10 minutes from now, the microphone of your computer. So pressing the button, you will start speaking and perform all the speech to text and so on. And then there is just um, a linking to jQuery because it's used in the JavaScript file and the JavaScript, the JavaScript file in itself. And basically, we are not going to see this HTML page anymore for, for all the examples. We, we will work on the PHP file and on the JavaScript file. So the PHP file right now is really, really simple. Basically, basically it accepts a POST request if this submit uh, element in this POST request is 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 is, is, a, is as something then take from the post request to the message and put it in a variable and then return back to the javascript file the same variable so it perform an echo i'm writing hi and the answer is i i'm writing how are you how are you just really really stupid right now just to have something here we will change this obviously um, maybe not today but that's it and then the JavaScript, that is a little bit more complex, not enormously. So first of all, it declares four variables, uh, one for speech input, uh, one that represents the button. So speech input A is the text that you are going to insert in the input field, uh, or you're going to speech and then will, will be uh, used as a speech input. The rec button, just to know if you are pressing the button for starting the recording, the microphone. A couple of messages, an internal error, like for handling internal server error, and a sorry message like, I don't have the answer to that, if it is some problem arise. Then, when the document is ready, uh, these two variables are filled up. So the speech input get the user query um, field, that is the input, and the rec button get the status of the button. Let, let, let's check this just to be sure. Yeah. So you see this button here as a rack as a D and this as user query as a D and this is the input field. Then if you type something and then we will also see this working. If you type something and uh, you press enter, that is the event um, 13, this is carriage return, 
uh, create a bubble chat, hmm? so a graphical element in which it put the content of what you type and send and call this send method. The, the send function is just the AJAX that send the message to the PHP file hmm? for processing. If, if this function is successful, it called a response, a response function, otherwise we'll print this message internal server error. And this response is right now uh, basically just two things. The first one is to get the response and put it in, a bubble, in another bubble chat. Or if the, the message is empty, just print, uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand or whatever it is. And then there is another last function that create this bubble chat and set up the, the web application, the web page in itself. So if I run this, you see it's very, very, it's basically is the definition of minimal. Uh, you have the input area on the bottom and the button for starting the microphone uh, in the corner. Yeah, if you press this, it does nothing. Right, right now, but if you type something, you see, you see one bubble chat that is the first eye and the response coming from the server that is in blue. Wonderful. And this work as a parrot, so whatever I, I type, how are you, it just answer how are you and we can continue in this way for forever but this is not the goal mm? so this is just basic idea what we would like to do here is to uh, obviously not writing we, we should we could uh, we will use writing for testing the natural language processing part especially because at the end the speech recognition creates text so we can write or speech it's the same for the natural language processing part but what we want to do is press this button here the microphone button and speak something and have this whatever I said uh, written here and processed so as as a first step we would like to say something put there in a green bubble receive the green the blue bubble with the same message because the php file is stupid right now and have this message also spoken by the browser and to do this we are going the, uh, to use the web speech api that are currently uh, that cover both speech recognition and speech synthesis that are currently a draft experimental and not official HTML5 API. So notice that um, it has a website, obviously, with the full documentation. And since it's a draft experimental and so on, it has a different degree of support across browsers. So what means? What means that this means that for speech synthesis, so text to speech, the support is quite good. You may see here that Firefox support that, Edge support uh, speech synthesis, Chrome support speech synthesis, Safari, Opera, uh, Safari on iOS, Chrome for Android, Firefox for Android, all support speech synthesis. So this could work also on a mobile phone without any problem, without in, with every browser that uh, you may have in, let's say, this century. Uh, for the speech, speech recognition part, this is uh, a different scenario in which you have uh, some kind of support on Edge. Basically, no support on Firefox right now. It's experimental, can partially be turned on, but only partially. So basically, no support. Uh, they are discussing to enable, but right now they are not, not, not possible. Uh, it's it's working on Chrome with again some specific implementation like in Edge. It doesn't work on Safari, uh, neither on desktop, neither on um, the mobile system. While it's work on Chrome for Android, with the same uh, let's say feature that for Chrome for desktop. That this feature is that they use a specific uh, some specific function that are not 
a standard so instead of say of using the speech recognition uh, method they use the webkit speech, speech recognition method but in the end uh, they are the same just uses a different prefix also edge as this uh, same um, uh, the same uh, property feature let's say so this is a scenario so let's let's a look at that uh, separately and then we are going to to add that to our code so the speech recognition is let's say the little bit more complex part to, to realize um, <clears throat> so this is everything running in the browser uh, so it uses the speech recognition and speech synthesis capability of your computer mm. uh, so if your computer so in my case I would we use a specific voice that is a voice for uh, macOS on Windows it will use the speech recognition synth, uh, system of Windows that is obviously different from that on Linux the same mm. so it leverage a local typically a local speech recognition and synthesis system so it depends from the computer or the mobile phone that you are using to access that also the voice that is produced by synthesis so the speech recognition api is accessed via the speech recognition interface that again on chrome is webkit speech recognition with webkit as a prefix and obviously provide the ability to recognize voice and transcribe voice on uh, in text and it, it work via the device default speech uh, recognition service mm -hmm. so either software the default for the operating system and also the default input mechanism mm -hmm. the microphone you cannot easily change if you have multiple microphone just at operating levels operating system level you have to change this uh, generally the, the interface constructor is used to create a new speech recognition object that can be used for recognized text uh, in, in different languages if you want uh, in different configuration you can recognize continuously speaking or so something that starts and never ends or you can just disable the, this uh, continuous uh, um, recognition so the recognition continues up to the user is speaking doesn't wait any time out any something any, anything else and you can for instance get also interim results you can get the results at the end of recognition like i'm saying i don't know if i say test 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 with interim results disabled i will get a certain point to test 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 uh, with the inter interim results enabled and maybe I get the best that a certain point become test and then the second test in another moment and then the third test in another moment it got all the interim results for the speech recognition and you can also specify specific grammar that you are going to to, to recognize a specific word that you are interested in the, rec the recognition so not just the general uh, english grammar english vocabulary but you want to recognize just five word for instance and you can define well this with this j speech grammar format but the minimal example for speech recognition uh, without prefix so if you copy and paste this and run this on chrome it doesn't work uh, it consists on creating a new speech recognition object that again on chrome will be called webkit speech recognition uh, and then you have to define some uh, event handler there there is on results what happens when the speech recognition complete it has a positive result for speech happens that uh, i get the transcript from the the results and i put it in a variable and this is the event handler so we created the object we set an event handler on that object that take in this case the transcript the text from the first word in this case of the the speech that is recognized is put in this in this constant and this event handler is finished here and then the recognition can start so if you imagine to run this the recognition starts and then when you stop speaking uh, this um, this event handler is called in this bar this constant you will see the word that you are going that you have you have just 
uh, saying. So if you say green in this speech to text, it will be the word green. Mm -hmm. So in order, this will ask the user, first of all, to load the page to have access to the microphone. The browser, first of all, will ask, do you want to, to, to allow the user to access the microphone? If you say no, anything here is working. If you say yes, obviously it, it will. Uh, then the user can start talking. And when she stop, the on results event then there, it will be fired and make the, the results available as a JavaScript object. In this case, um, put in a constant. Um, uh, yeah, well, if you want to, to go deep, this event.results event is, well, the object that is arrived to the event handler result as a bidimensional, it's a two-dimensional array um, that has two uh, variables, two, two index. The first one is the transcript, the second one, so typically is, um, is sorry, is, the, tra is the, the index of the word in that recognized sentence, so zero is the first word, and the second zero in this case is the alternative. So I'm seeing, um, let, let's imagine that I'm saying green. So the first alternative for the, my recognized green, the one that is that has a big percentage of success. So the, the computer system is confident quite a lot that I'm saying green is green. And the second is maybe grid because it's similar, but is a less confidence. And the third one could be another alternative like, uh, I don't know. Grit or something like that. So multiple alternative, the zero get the first one that is the best one according to the speech-to-text system. So we are going to always take the, the number zero, the index, the second index is zero, and then the transcript to have the actual test. And you can see here uh, all the documentation, we are not going through, through that, but you can obviously set a language, these continuous results that I, I told you. Uh, you can have a series of methods, start to start in the recognition, stop to stopping that, maybe when pressing another button, a series of events, when the audio starts, when the audio ends, with the service ends in general, when there is an error, no match, the results as we have seen, a sound start, a sound end, a speech start, a speech ends. So in, just in case you, do, you want not to recognize speech, but maybe just any sound that is processed here. Obviously the transcript is not really useful with sound start, but you get uh, the object coming from the microphone. Uh, and then there is some example here uh, as well. And this is about speech recognition. And we will see the example, but let me before start finish with speech synthesis because it's much, much uh, easier, uh, also shorter to, to realize. Uh, the speech synthesis has obviously an interface that is different from the other one that is speech synthesis without prefix because this is uh, really supported in multiple browser. And again, as before, uses the default speech synthesizer of your computer, both hardware and software. So in, in the case here, uses the, the speaker of the laptop. You can also have different voices for the speech synthesis. Obviously, they depend either from the browser and they depend from the operating system that you are running. Uh, different voices, also different languages for that voices. And while the speech synthesis interface is the general interface, to have the computer speak, you have to not give the computer just the text, but you have to create this speech synthesis utterance as an object that can be used to process the text in this intermediate utterance-like uh, object. And then you can use speech synthesis.speak for effectively speak the, the text. And this is a minimal example that works if you copy and paste it in a browser, in a console browser, it works without any problem, different before. So you create the object speech synthesis, you create an utterance that basically is one word, a sentence, a voice element, and then you can say speak that sentence. 
So this will, as I said before, create an utterance from the text and reproduce, in this case, with the default voice of the operating system that is personalizable through the device speaker, if it's the speaker at the default um, um, output mechanism. And as before, this, is, this has a lot of methods. You can put, you have some properties, is pause, is pending, is speaking, the system is speaking. You can get voices to get different, all the list of the different kind of voice, voices. You can put the, the speech synthesis in pause, you can resume, start speaking, uh, and so on. And similarly, a lot of event, an event that detects if the voice changes, and so on. And if you open uh, a console here, uh, no, uh, you can create uh, a speech synthesis and say, I know that you you don't see anything, but. I'm going to, I'm writing speech synthesis dot speak uh, uh, new speech uh, synthesis utterance, uh, for instance, of hello, and if I press enter, it should speak hello. Maybe. Let's try. Hello. Okay, this is the default voice in English for the computer and if you say speech synthesis dot get voices you have uh, on chrome an array of 67 different voices uh, for instance you have the default one that is alex uh, in english that is a local service because it's run on my computer and then there is a uh, Alice because it's in Italian and then it's again a local service in uh, Swedish, French, uh, Germany, English, Great Britain, United Kingdom, another English, US and so on. And you have 67 because at a certain point you have a series of uh, non-local service because the local service is false that are Google Dutch, Google English, Google UK English female. These are not, they are voices that are produced by Google server, so they are not local to your computer. If you run this get voice um, instruction on any other browser, you just get, so Firefox for instance, you just get the first 47 voices that are the local one and not the Google um, provided voices that are only provided on uh, Chrome and Chrome like and either on desktop on on, um, on mobile but you can use that you just need a server running because otherwise it doesn't work and an internet connection to reach um, Google services but here for instance the default voice is this Alex in in English United States because the computer is set up in English United States and it's a local service provided by the operating system and this is the default voice but you can choose so without choosing you get English US Alex uh, as a local service by default but you can change language voice and so on so let's try to add these speech synthesis just uh, three lines four lines of code in our JavaScript um, code. Mm -hmm. So when I press, mm, so the idea is that when I press, when I receive a response from our PHP server, mm, that in this case is just a parrot as an echo of what I say, this is not written, not only written in the blue bubble, but also speaking, uh, sp spoken by the computer. Mm. So uh, if we go through this, we know that uh, these functions send, uh, uh, just to, to give you again the, the path to this, this function send, uh, get the text that you inserted, make a post uh, to this process.php that is in the, in the same server, 
um, with this uh, body submit true and message equal text and this is the speech input and uh, if this operation is successful when the php server reply correctly uh, we call this respond data and pass it this data to this respond function and this response function that is the one that created the blue blue chat bubble uh, basically right now check if this is empty and say sorry because there is no text and then create the, the actual babel so here we can have since it's created a bubble here we can create a speech synthesis so the same three uh, lines that uh, are present in the slide so first of all let's create uh, a message so a variable that hosts our text as a synthesis utterance so we need a new speech synthesis utterance of uh, val let's do it step by step a new speech synthesis utterance then this message variable has a series of properties including text so we can say this text is the text from which to create the utterance is the value that we receive so in this case the echo but we can also set for instance that the language of this text is english or italian or whatever you want and there is a property that is lang that can be set up for instance uh, to uh, an us since the speech in the speech recognition is in uh, an us it's it's a good idea to have a match between this thing and and that's it we create our synthesis as our utterance with the text and the language and we can have the computer speak so like as before we can say window.speechsynthesis.speak and msg that is the utterance so we create an object hosting the utter utterance we add as a text of this utterance the message we are receiving back from the server we set up a language that is english uh, and uh, we have this message uh, spoken and then you will also create the the bubble notice that um, we didn't set up a voice so we are using the default one here that is this, that alex and uh, and we set up a uh, language but we can also skip that part if we want like in the example of the browser so if i run the save this and reopen chrome and maybe hard refresh this let's try hello so as before i'm writing the same uh, thing comes back and the computer also how are you how are you uh, speak the same message that comes back to the server so you can have the message on text or and or uh, on voice and this is the speech synthesis it's really really trivial indeed speech recognition speech recognition requires us to do two things the first of all enable this button here the microphone button when we want to press the microphone button uh, we want to start the recognition and um, we can also change maybe the the icon to say is recording is not recording and so on so to do this we need to uh, to move here so here there is an event that uh, get the click on that button so uh, at the end uh, we would like to click on the button and if it's the recognition is not started start it uh, and if the recognition is already ongoing maybe stop the recognition because 
we, we something happens so we want to do it again or any reason but right now let's just create uh, when i press the button just the start of the recognition so we can use a, a start uh, recognition function that we are going to create hmm? for instance and we can create this here so function start recognition uh, yeah So what we are going to do here, first of all, as in the slide, we need to instantiate the speech recognition object. So if we are in Chrome, so uh, I create a variable here that is called the recognition because it's useful also later on. And uh, uh, here we can say recognition equal new webkit speech uh, recognition and this is this work on chrome only on chrome if we want to maintain a little bit of generality because maybe in one week this function also works on firefox we can split this line in two and have a uh, another variable here like speech recognition that it's equal to webkit speech recognition the interface or just speech recognition and so here we can instantiate just speech recognition so if we are using chrome for sure we will get uh, webkit speech recognition otherwise we will get the other interface and we are going to use that to create our speech recognition object that is in this recognition so we can set up some properties of this recognition like continuous and interim results so recognition dot uh, uh, continuous we can say that we don't want a continuous recognition of the language we want to speak and then have the sentence processed and then eventually optionally speak another time or not but we don't want a continuous recognition and we don't want uh, uh, interim results we are just interested in the final results of the entire sentence we don't want to know how many errors we are going to do in the recognition process the, the, the system the speech recognition system is going to do the evaluating the alternative and so on just the final results so recognition dot interim results it's equal to false as well then at a certain point we are going to say recognition.start because this is the function that starts the recognition but before um, <coughs> um, and, and, event and eventually also the language recognition.language lang equal as before and us so notice that this is redundant in our case because uh, if it's not defined this it takes the uh, language specified here so here it's specified language equal english so automatically get english as a language to be sure we can specify them also in uh, um, the JavaScript code just in case we do not delete delete that that proper that attributes there and and things stop working so having on both part could be useful it's not a, a great trade-off so uh, we create the object we um, set continuous to false interim results to false the language and finally we start the recognition in between we have to set up some event handler like uh, for sure what happens uh, when the recognition is finished is concluded on result so 
uh, recognition dot on results so what happens when the results event is uh, triggered so on results uh, function <coughs> of an event So we are, uh, when the event result is triggered by the system, we are going to do this in this line and passing through the, the event from which we have, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the results, the textual part of the, of the, recon the recognized speech. So uh, we need, uh, in the slide here, in the example, we just basically this one in the slide here we just have event dot results of zero zero dot transcript because we're just interested in the first word here we don't know how many word we are going to have maybe it's just an hello or maybe it's what's the weather in turin so a lot of words so we need to to loop to cycle on these uh, events dot results um, object uh, of this array of this matrix and and see what happens mm -hmm. and get the information and concatenate and concatenate in a single object so let's create a, a variable just to that we are going to call text mm -hmm. it's an empty variable to concatenate the various uh, things that we are going to get from the transcript and then let's cycle on it. Uh, with a, a, a four that doesn't start from a zero, but start from event dot results uh, index i minor, minor of uh, event. event dot uh, <coughs> results dot length so we are going to just use everything in these results and e plus plus and what we are going to do we are going to get the all the uh, element in this matrix in results and put and concatenate in this text variable so we have this text uh, plus equal uh, event dot results uh, of i and zero mm. each word first alternative that typically should be the best one dot transcript mm. that, that is the text and uh, here we should also uh, stop the recognition because we get the results we can stop the recognition hmm. so just just to, to, to recap uh, we create a speech recognition instance uh, we set up some properties continuous false and interim result false we set up what happens on results that basically we get all these results and put them together and then af uh, out of this, uh, fun this event handler we set up a language and we have the recognition start uh, we also we may also need uh, a uh, recognition dot on start if you want this is basically mm, aesthetical let me say so when the recognition start we can give uh, an explicit feedback to the user that the microphone is working that is expecting to speak to just have the process triggered and we can also 
have a recognition dot end dot on end so what happens when the uh, recognition process stops stops because of problem stop because the result is triggered stop because a timeout since it's not continuous typically browser implements a timeout if you don't speak for 10 60 seconds this the microphone is turned off so basically you have no um, no word recognized as a text or if you just don't speak and make some noise so what happens when the process ends in any case uh, so we can have these three obviously if we did if we set up as on end we need to say here that uh, recognition dot on end is null hmm? because uh, we cancel the execution of that event what happens when that event is triggered because we have the results so we have, we're fine with that we don't want to trigger another event to say something different we are going to use uh, on end just to intercept errors even if there is an on error uh, handler or not speaking word or any other issue microphone is not working so no sound is recorded and so on so in on start we can basically say uh, respond that is our function that print uh, on screen and then also speak right now uh, we can respond let me see the message uh, message recording so we can create here another variable that say message recording like um, recording so press the button appears recording it also spoken recording and then you can also you can you can start speak and so we can have this uh, respond the recording and, uh, uh, and, and stop we can also here change if you want the status of the icon so we can have uh, a microphone and then we can have a microphone uh, with a slash on it just to say the microphone is is in use and so you are speaking so don't if you press again you stop it just to change status of the icon of the microphone if you want this is here is a good place to do that and uh, obviously on uh, on result we should do the opposite operation if you want and on end instead uh, we can do the same thing with another message uh, more let's say error prone uh, message like not an internal error not the sorry uh, the couldn't hear message so let's create another one let's say i'm sorry i can i cannot hear you what are you saying or something like that so message couldn't uh, hear and uh, i couldn't uh, hear you could uh, you repeat just a couple message and uh, where we are here so it prints this uh, this message and we can here decide to stop the recognition or or, or, or not and then we just need uh, another things here that is uh, another function here that stops the recognition so we create a function stop recognition that basically um, stop the recognition so if uh, recognition if it's if it's instantiate that variable we can say recognition dot stop and recognition equal null just to delete uh, everything 
and be sure and again this could be another point in which to change the the icon because here we stop the recognition for every instances and this we can call this function both on uh, here stop recognition we are we get the results uh, we are happy with that and we can stop the recognition and also on on end we can stop the recognition for instance and we need uh, just okay and we need since we are speaking but our system works by getting uh, uh, the content of this speech input variable that is what i type in the um, in the input area on the button of the user interface i need to put the recognized text in this speech input variable so we can create another function here inside the on on, on start event uh, sorry on results event um, that could be set input text so we are going to pass this text that we compose to a function here for instance that will have uh, what's called set input uh, of uh, text mm -hmm. and we are going to set the text in that variable speech input uh, uh, dot dot val of text <coughs> we can create the bubble chat and there is a function for doing that uh, of uh, again uh, this speech input val uh, and here uh, self this function gets two uh, attributes, a second parameter self is I am speaking and other is the other person, is the system that is speaking. So if self is the gray one and if other it's the blue one. So we can create a bubble chat, we can send it to our Ajax function and just send and uh, we can clean this uh, speech input because we don't need anymore we want to create another speech input if we write for instance if we say another thing so this uh, should be so i've told you that it's a little bit more a uh, little bit difficult than the speech synthesis because there are different uh, things to set up so we can we can try and then no matter the results uh, i will stop here and we will continue tomorrow so i refresh this so let's try recording hello recording hello okay so uh, obviously we, we missed something because it got also this recording so probably we have to, to move uh, that before starting the actual um the actual recording but yeah uh, it, it get not only my voice but also um, the computer voice so we will um, change that this uh, tomorrow uh, right now before uh, speaking individually probably about uh, your feedback let me give me some general comments on milestone number two so these are general comments that apply to uh, to to most of the project not all the project but most of the project so 
most of you didn't have diverging storyboards or diverging prototypes uh, you will you ever see most of your comments have this your storyboard are diverging your prototype are not diverging uh, some of your prototypes are not diverging but uh, we lost faith and we stopped writing that uh, because first of all we cannot do anything right now about this uh, because you should to fix that you should throw away all the milestone number two that is probably uh, not the case since it applied to most of you so this is fine so let's say that this is fine for now um, uh, this is the reason to, for this this picture uh, because yeah, you know this is the first edition of this course so we are uh, working by imaging how things uh, could could do could work and so we we trying to imagine okay you can do two storyboards uh, diverging and then each prototype implements the storyboards this probably uh, was not um, good uh, in general so lesson learned <laughs> maybe next year just one storyboard and not two uh, but it was a nice try and uh, this is fine so if you have that comment just uh, skip that if you don't have the comment your storyboard are diverging good for you we are not going to penalize anybody for this just to be to be clear this is fine not not really for us because the fire but this is fine in general other comments a little bit more serious mm -hmm. uh, and this is something that you must do or you should do if if you want to get a good mark uh, when we are evaluating for real uh, your milestone your deliverable uh, the first comment is that i just have a couple of slides not, not a lot uh, the link between the storyboards and the prototype must emerge in some cases you, you did a good work in other cases not clear uh, which is the link between the storyboards and the paper prototype in theory storyboard number one that is diverging from storyboard number two but storyboard number one should map with prototype number one and storyboard number two should map with prototype number two this is the default setting if you didn't do this and some uh, some project quite a lot if i a, a good number let's say don't explicitly say that maybe they have this mapping maybe this mapping is not clear so just uh, put in the deliverable this how storyboards and prototype are mapped are two storyboards i'm sorry are two prototypes for the first storyboards two prototypes are for the second storyboards two tribes are mix of both storyboards no matter just explicitly say that and this is the first thing the second thing that i, uh, I honestly uh, i would i wouldn't uh, like to write this because I don't know how many times both me and Professor Corno say that and it's also written in uh, where is in the slides about the exam no sign up sign in help page recover password page this is amazing a and all these kind of things is not needed nor for milestone number two so if you have a picture about that remove from git uh, not for the rest of the course no sign in the, your user are already sign in and sign up with all the wonderful properties you're going to have and no help pages really this is a human computer interaction course you, your interface should be easy usable without help pages uh, in theory no recover password because you don't have sign in and your user are perfect and never forget a password in their life so all these things, uh, most of them I notice in the feedback, in the issue on GitHub, but please remove that. And uh, again, not needed nor useful for this stage. It's, it's really not useful to have an heuristic evaluation on a default login form, which every website has. The only reason to have one of these things, but it's not anything about you, is if you are prototyping a novel wonderful 30th century level sign up sign in method if you are not if you are just having a username and password field again skip it and 
again, this apply to uh, M2, obviously, apply to M3, no navigation from login, no wireframe for login and sign up, uh, and to the final prototype as well. And please review the slides about the exam that say this thing from lecture number one. Other topic uh, about the heuristic evaluation. Uh, results of the heuristic evaluation should be summarized in your uh, document and the raw data, like a spreadsheet, should be linked. Most of, some of you, let's say half half, uh, linked a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet, but don't summarize very well. Just maybe someone just put a picture or just say, yeah, we are going to do this change. Yeah. Uh, why? Uh, trust, trust him. Uh, trust me. It's it's on the spreadsheet. Yeah, I know. But maybe uh, close that gap. And so there should be a link to the raw data. Could be a spreadsheet. Could be a doc, another kind of document, an online spreadsheet, an Excel file, whatever you want. But it should be linked and visible f from us. And also a brief summary. Not pages and pages, but the most important issue that emerge from the evaluation are one, two, three, four, five. And so we are going to propose changes according to all these issues, but especially according to these four or five issues. And notice also that in your report, you, we should always be able to understand that you have made, received four evaluation, two per prototype, not two at least four. Hmm? A group use three person, in that case, uh, six. But uh, so you have, you should have had uh, two person that were evaluating both your prototype. So evaluator number one evaluates prototype number one and prototype number two, and evaluator number two prototypes bo uh, evaluates both prototype number one and Prototype number two. For some of you, not a lot, this is not uh, emerging from the, um, neither the raw data, neither from the, um, the, the document in itself. And then I can also suggest if you want a cheap way to solve that, but without the microphone, maybe not in video recording. And in the end of the document, most of you, all of you, wrote about the proposed change and this is great but please explicitly say what you are going to do with your two paper prototypes explicitly say not we are going to do these changes yeah great but with two paper prototypes you are going to merge them completely partially just screen number one from the second and add to, to all the screens of prototype number two, one or you're going to use an improved version of the first one and uh, throw away all the second one or vice versa. Just say that. For some of you, uh, some groups say that. For some group is sort of implicit. Uh, for some group is neither implicit nor explicit. So just the, the answer is boo at the end. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So. 10 minutes uh, at 7, we can stop that. And if you have a question about milestone number 2, please come here. And have a good night otherwise. <laughs>